Although you might want to note, Apple, the most valuable company on the planet, is in Silicon Valley <laughs> uh, right now, and it's moving to a trillion dollar valuation. Google shares are up so high. This is the, the big buy in technology right now. Um, controls all the world, search information. Um, even in its, in its state that it's in right now, with the stock market thing, Facebook's still very influential with 900 million to a billion people using it um, at, a, uh, at a valuation of 50 to 55 billion dollars. You know, you could go on and on with one app company after the other that's incredibly successful. Well, there's a lot of, of carcasses in the back, yeah, too. But that's but yeah. the, well, I don't mean to be rude, but, you know, at least 26% of Tom Cruise movies, for example. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, lots and lots of movies get made, and maybe maybe 46%. Um, lots of movies get made that don't, you know, that don't do well. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, a a, mo a movie's not a thing. company, but, yeah, so that, okay. So it's just, I mean, there's going to be a lot of these companies, and I think what's... Uh, for the most part, most of these movies, uh, most of uh, just like movies are made here, or television shows that don't catch on or whatever, um, it's a it's a culture that creates things, and if it works, it doesn't. Um, if it works, it works. It works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and the reasons it works are relatively clear um, in 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 a Silicon Valley sense, and why it doesn't catch on. And some things aren't just like movies. Why do certain movies do well? Um, why did Instagram do better over a photo uh, other photo sharing mm -hmm. service? Many of which were quite good. Exactly. So, well, exactly. Okay. I, let me just third, say, the one thing, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley does embrace failure. Here, it's not embraced at all. In fact, it's, it, you know, it, I think it's one of the things, my reflections when I come down here, and I happen to like Silic uh, Los Angeles and Hollywood much more so than the average Silicon Valley person does. But I, I find it to be a culture that thrives on fear and insecurity in a way that's really deeply embedded into the system. Well, but I could, I could counter that Silicon Valley thrives on pie-eyed optimism and without often uh, financials that underpin that the, the, the next idea that's going to change the world. I want to go on to a different question. We can come back to that. One of the questions that I think that Hollywood um, asks is they suspect, it's my sense, that they suspect that Silicon Valley gives a lot of lip service to content. And con we need content, and we love content, and content's so important. But, they, but they're, it's just, they're just lying. They don't really... You know, I don't think they're lying as much as content is, is just like anything else. I mean, look, look at a company like Google. It doesn't look at content as anything more than something it can put into bits and bytes and spew back out. Well, but and that's so, exactly right. But it's not doesn't care about it. It's that it, it, it looks at it as a, a different thing than you do here. You all consider it, you know, every, every little thing that they make, just like me in journalism, everything I do is I'm a little hothouse flower I must is so beautiful, and yet it really isn't. It really, it just is just words on a page kind of thing. And it isn't as special as I might like to think it is. Um, and so I, I think one of the things that you have to think about is that these, these companies see them as data. Everything is data to most companies in Silicon Valley, and data that can be you know, either figured out for advertising or data that can be given to consumers or targeted to consumers, and they don't have any emotion about it. I mean, you, you imagine that they care, and that's the, that's the issue. Is yeah, but what the, well, that... I don't think I don't think Hollywood imagines that Silicon Valley cares. I think Silicon Valley, as I just say, as I as I said, d pays lip service to the fact. I mean, they they like to be at the parties. They like to go to the Oscars. They, sort of. Some of them. Some of them. Some but of them. Not very many of them. Not not. I mean. No, some of them. Some of them, but not as many. I mean, you, if you think about it, most of the most of the top. You don't see Jeff Bezos swanning around an Oscar party. You just don't. Maybe, he came maybe to our not. Oscar party well, last okay, year, and I was thrilled Jeff. that he okay, did. But, so, but I, once, <laughs> one, I'm just saying. Oh, I have a photo. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's not something that it, that's. Um, you know, it was interesting. We just Amazon did started it. Amazon Studios. Amazon's starting to do original content. Absolutely. It's, uh, but it's not lip service. It's that they are creating devices that need content, and so they need to have good relationships. I just, I don't think they aspire to be Hollywood moguls. I just don't. I, 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 you just don't get that. The difference to me is that's exactly that. Is and you just said it in, in in your response, which is that to Silicon Valley, content is bits and bytes. Right. Content and to people in this room, I would mm -hmm. I would submit that content is something very different than bits and bytes because this. These words, when you put them together, are very different. Just as, like you know, as a journalist, are very different than a random assortment of words that to mm -hmm. that to coders are exactly the same as as any other mm -hmm. set. So the, the the amount of work and sweat equity and creativity and um, uh, inspiration that has to go into that that ineffable stuff is the thing I think that Silicon Valley doesn't value. You could say the same thing about coding coding uh, all kinds of things. C coding is quite creative, even though it seems and I like agree. It's a bunch of, so I mean, I don't. I just think it's just that it's they they don't see they see it as part of the whole thing because it's not just the content they like. 
it might be entertainment has changed so drastically of what entertainment is and what keep people Well, you busy. were defining it very broadly last it's night. It's very broad, fair but it is do. very broad. I do think that's fair to do. The time you spend on Facebook talking to your friends is your leisure but time. not just that, Instagram, well, playing games, doing all kinds of things. And so you have to like broaden your idea of what entertainment is anymore because these little devices in our hands are really supercomputers. I mean, if you think about it, the, the phone is more powerful than any computer you had 20 years ago sitting there with access to the whole world. It mm -hmm. is a very interesting, I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but one of my best relations with my life is with my iPhone. It's really quite, we, we get along, it usually works. The mapping is just fine, by the way. Um, uh, and <laughs> you have the new iPhone? No, I don't, I'm too cheap. Um, it's, I'll wait until I can trade it in with Verizon. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that much, it's pretty and skinny. It's like no, I think we all, new. we all, like everybody else in the world, I think everybody in Hollywood is absolutely, we're umbilically attached to our devices right. as, much as, as much as anybody. Yeah. And they, they've enabled creators of content to do things with fewer resources right. than has ever been imagined in the history of creativity, really. Which is so why you have to focus on that device. I mean, these devices, these mobile, one of the big new terms, we like to create terms in Silicon Valley, and most of them are, are horse shit, most of the terms they come up with. But one of the ones that is really important is this idea of mobile first. It, they're saying it a lot. It's a big mm. deal the phrase um, in Silicon Valley now. And I think it's actually quite an apt one, is that everything is now being focused on mobile first. These devices are the way people are going to consume, manipulate, and move around content in ways that you can't even imagine. Because once you get it into people's hands, the problem is Hollywood and a lot of other industries, not just Hollywood, has been operated from the very gatekeeper mentalities. We'll give it to you when we want it. The consumers have taken control of the situation, and they aren't giving it back. They've got these devices that allow them to manipulate all this content in ways that we can't even imagine, nor should we imagine. Because they'll figure it out and let us know. Kind that, of thing. that sounds like very, I, that, that may be true, but from a business perspective and from a, from a balance of power perspective, right. it's, it'd be easy to look at the landscape today and say, <laughs> the game is over and Amazon, <coughs> Facebook, Google, and Apple have won. They haven't won, but they control the most important parts of the, of the system. Do you, think it's, do you think that's true, though? I mean, let's say we went through the first tech wave, bubble burst. We've been through a second tech wave. A lot of companies launched, spiked very high mm -hmm. in their valuation and then crashed to earth. And then you've had a, a bunch of prime movers that have dominated in the space right. and that, have, that are now buying up everything right. that would smell like competition to them. Do you think we're kind of done that those companies no, are now for the next... 100 years oh, going no. to be the dominant no. companies. No, nothing is around for 100 years. There's very few tech companies that have Ford, lasted 30. Ford, motor company was around for 100 years. Yeah, but it's like not that. the same situation. I mean, Microsoft, you know, which is considered trouble despite its billions of dollars in profit every year, billions and billions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tech companies have a very short, much shorter shelf life, you know, in terms of how long they stay in power. So the next Google, it, who knows where it's coming from? I mean, that's the, that's the problem. That's why Google bought Motorola. That's why Google's into the phones. It's why Google... Is making those crazy fucking glasses, like right, but you know, they whatever. Can, but they're in a. <laughs> <laughs> I call them the. I call them the never get laid glasses ever. <laughs> think about it. They put them on the supermodels. Someone from Google's like, "What do you think of us at the fashion shows?" I'm like, "I don't believe you made models incredibly unfuckable. How did you do that?" <laughs> wow, fantastic. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. So, but that sort of proves the point. They can. They have so much cash. Apple right. has so much cash. Right. They can buy any competitor yes. that before they can get any traction, mm -hmm. honestly. And that's kind of what they've been doing. So it would suggest... Well, Apple hasn't bought a lot of companies, no. They don't buy companies. Not. Well, yeah, but... They, Google okay, does. Google that, does. That's fair, but they're so dominant that they can pretty much... Do anything much, they want. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So if they wanted to make content, they could make content. If they want. I don't see them doing that. No, I, who need, they, don't, they don't need right. to. They, right. they, they don't need to. But certainly, you know, you could you could actually argue that Apple is a certain expression of a certain kind of content, of course, and creativity. But I think that's the, the, the point being that those those big companies now, it does feel like it's possible that it's kind of game over for if not a hundred years, twenty years. It's not game over. It's that you have to broaden the idea of what content is anymore. And so your Hollywood is just another piece of the content game. And so that, it's not that you've lost, it's that you're, the, 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 it's sort of like theater. Theater is still a vibrant part of New York society um, and, and, and people that go there and stuff like that. But it doesn't mean it's over. It means it's just part of a broad panoply of choices that now are available on tablets, especially these tablets. These smaller tablets coming out are really fantastic. 
not just in terms of transforming work and transforming the ability to do things on the fly and pull down information all over the place, is that it creates these, these very intimate relationships with these devices that consumers love. They really do, they wouldn't be buying all these friggin' things if they didn't love them. That may change, they may decide they don't like them. Where it's going is that it's not just gonna be a tablet, that table's gonna be a tablet, you know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a screen. When screens are everywhere, and they are going to be, speaking of a Tom Cruise movie that I actually liked, um, Minority Report, mm -hmm. um, I didn't like him in it, but, um, he just, he Tell us frantic. more. <laughs> uh, he's, he's such a frantic actor. I'm like, calm down. Um, so, uh, but all that stuff that was in that movie, you should go watch that movie in terms of Again, the screens yeah. and where they are and how information moved around. They had, they had a million ideas in that movie that mm -hmm. were really... That are going to happen. Ha absolutely. Yeah, that right. was done by, <coughs> I think, the imag a group down here who was imagining things. Um, so you have to think, you're not lost. It's just you're not the most important part of the, of the puzzle. You're part of the puzzle.